been a while, hasn't it? Well, since then we took over that city and now we moved to this city here. Me and my group. Let's show you around. It's my place here, the usual. Down here is my office. Down here. This is my office area down here. See? My office area. Bedroom upstairs, round room, like a show, like a normal place. Then those other houses, that's where members stay and survivors stay. So, yeah, pretty much, you know, it's a usual apocalypse space. Let's go to up here. Tree, let's go to at the park. This way. Bush, hey, I'll take the watch from now. Thank you, boss. You're welcome. Go get some rest. You've been staying up for a couple of days now, so yeah, thanks. You're welcome. Plus, playing her blunt while we watch. I began to hope that whatever chemical was in my system was starting to die and that there might not be permanent effects after all. I walked through the parking lot. The place was abandoned, though it didn't seem voluntarily. Some of the car doors were open, and some were painted red. One trunk was open, half filled with groceries and a carton of eggs smashed upon the concrete next to it. Yeah, Dozens yeah. of cars were left astray. The car that had rolled over had smashed the glass doors leading into a grocery store. It appeared the car was resting upon a few people, their blood and organs forced out of their bodies all over the cement. The winds blew. It was cold. I got to the dumpster behind the store and opened it up. I grabbed a piece of cardboard and underneath was a small child, face gnawed until it was unrecognizable. I could see the bone of the nose, though the cartilage was gone. There was an ear spat out next to his head. The lips were eaten in a particularly vicious way, exposing smashed in teeth and purple gums. The eyes had been slurped out, leaving this eight-year-old child staring into the sky with a lifeless gaze. The skull was smashed in, and the brain was served at 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. The places to the muscle, and others to the bone. This was the work of something wild, something extremely vicious. Oh, no the child was small enough to be an easy meal for a pack of starving dogs. There was even a news report about cases like this a few months ago, wasn't there? Or did it seem like something that would be on the news? Regardless... I reached my hands into the emptied stomach, digging up past the remains in search of wet blood. After getting some, I wrote, I'm not an enemy. Don't. Attack. On the cardboard. The body gave off a foul stench, and it wasn't the sight so much as it was the scent that deterred me. It wasn't decomposition, but there was something definitely wrong with the corpse. So, I left, utterly forgetting the small child. I arrived back at the opening of the apartment complex. The door the group had entered was shut, tight. I waited, not sure how long it was, but completely content with- Was it? Oh, fucker, Jumbly. Hello, fucker. Yo! Come on. Stand. Yeah, yeah, the took. That 
fucking took care of him. Let's go back now to the place. Up here and yeah. Press play yo. Passing the time, doing nothing. Have no blood yo. I thought it would be better to see them coming before they could see me. So I took my sign and went to the cemetery across the street from the apartment where I would be able to properly observe them. Night came. Everything was quiet. Not a single car passed. No one walked along the sidewalk. There wasn't a single person out picking up fast food, visiting the grocery store, or renting a movie. Orange glows on the horizon kept me company. Anything that a human being might once do was never to be done again. I lay there, silently, watching, alone in a yard full of corpses. I had the same sensation I had in the neighborhood I woke up in, that there were people around. I knew I could feel the ones in that apartment, so I waited for them. The only uncomfortable part was the cold. I couldn't get warm at all. I wished my body would metabolize whatever was in me. I just wanted to feel all right again. I was slowly beginning to forget what exactly I needed metabolized from my body. Was it something bad? It couldn't be, as I felt perfectly fine. I had the vague feeling that I should wait for the people who went into the house that maybe that woman I saw could tell me what I needed out of my system. I spent the night next to the grave of Chris Redfield. Then, day came. It seemed slow, but I couldn't be sure. My mind was only conjuring up blanks when I tried accessing the last few hours' images. The clouds stayed, like a dark harbinger hiding whatever might be bright. Whatever was left could be warm, if there was anything that could make me warm again conversation to each other, but the man let me continue on. No. How can you trust him? The man yelled as the woman I love started walking towards me. We're going back. Right now. With or without you. And the other two started running back up the stairs. However, they meant nothing to me, so I didn't care. I dropped the sign. This woman, a complete stranger to me, yet so familiar, I felt that if I lost her now, I would lose my entire life. She came closer and stopped. Oh, Is that you? She whispered. Yes. I managed to articulate with difficulty. For this woman, I could remember nothing about. This woman that I loved, I would do anything. She walked up to me. I extended my arms to embrace her. And when she fell into them, I ripped her fucking throat out. The flesh in my mouth went second and swallowed in the next. She started choking on blood, trying to scream and failing, falling to the concrete. She was mute, the same way I was. I got down to my knees, making a fist and smashing through her ribcage to get the best tasting organs. I broke the skin, broke bones, gripped her heart and ripped it out and started savoring it. I had no idea why I was doing any of this, as I was now a mere victim of my instincts. This drive took over my hands and jaws, this inherent You're rage and gone, within my existence. I now knew the purpose of you my existence. Survive anymore. The only thing that I loved right now was the way her flesh tasted. The first thing I had been able to taste in so long. It had the perfect texture, the right amount of chewiness, and the blood was a perfect complement. I felt an elation. I felt an amazing high I had never known as I consumed her carcass. I felt a tooth get stuck in a particularly calloused piece of hand but swallowed it anyway. I would regret this later if I could still regret. If I could still regret, I might regret that after I had my fill, this woman would get up, only to suffer the same bewilderment and estrangement from reality as I had. I might regret that I was purposely going to let her reanimate so she could go and infect others. I might regret the deaths of the others she would eat I might regret letting the corpses of children be thrown into dumpsters after her victims did their part to spread this disease. If I could still regret. If I even cared to regret. 
I might regret succumbing to the results of my twist of fate. I am now the plague bearer. I am now the one I used to despise in horror movies. I am the downfall of my former race. I am the apocalypse. And then I began to feast. The emotions I'd experienced these last two days had it just burned. ended. Ever since the genetic switch within humanity's junk DNA was pulled magnetically, there was no place more like hell than home. Each one of us were now another's apocalypse. One by one, countries fell. The northern hemisphere was hit, then America, then our state. It was one swift sweep, like <laughs> God waving his hand across the world to clean up a mess he had let grow too big. I knew it was the end. The beginning of the end started when one undead broke into our home and bit my husband in the back of the neck. Life became meaningless. Until this moment, now he was back. Back from the dead. Not completely, but close enough. My reason to stay alive was resurrected in the form of this corpse in front of me. I could see past the gaze in his eyes that he could remember me, that he had been searching for me. He stared at me, the way he used to stare at me, before he would tell me he loved me. Ash stepped forward, and I quickly stepped in front of him. I read the sign my husband had made, painted in some sort of red, which said, I-M-N-E-M-E, -E, Dort Attack. His spelling was never very good anyways, but this meant that he was still cognitively functioning. And even though he was a shambling corpse with a shin bone piercing through his calf, I still loved him. I tried to stop myself from crying. What are you doing? Ash asked. That's my husband, I told him. That's not your husband. He's a corpse, a zombie hungering for your flesh. He probably walked in from the same cemetery as that other cadaver. I'm going to talk to him. No, how can you trust him? But I had already started walking down towards my husband. We're going back now, with or without you. I heard Ash yell, and then their footsteps up the stairs. I didn't need them, though. The only person I needed was him, the man in front of me, the one with the dilated, newly pigmented pupils that were as ghostly as the full moon, the one with the blanched, sickly pallor, whose jaw hung slightly slack and leaked a purple fluid. He was missing one of his front teeth, but with the bloody and rotting gums he had developed, it seemed like they'd fall out soon anyway. He was covered in dried blood and smelled of decomposition, no but death was the final barrier, and he had broken it. Now, we could be together, forever. I stopped in front of him. Is that you? I asked. Yes. He rasped. Scalpel, and then zoned back in by a high school special ed student with a cleft hand. I walked up. He opened his arms and embraced me. The cold was the first thing I felt. Such an overwhelming cold. I opened my eyes with difficulty. I was staring up at the sky. Massive clouds, dark and menacing, were sailing through the firmament. Lamps lit the area I was in with an orange glow creating an eerie, otherworldly sensation, as if I were in some reality that never existed until this moment. With as much strength as I could muster, I tried moving. My muscles were stiff, and bending them was almost impossible. I finally got up, though. I took a look around. I was in the parking lot of what looked like an apartment complex. Where was this? Where was I? Wait a second. Who was I? I began to try and recall something. Anything from my memory. Nothing came up. I tried calling out, but the only noise I made was a strange gurgling, as if my throat were full of liquid. Then I looked down. There was a corpse next to me, laying face up. I had the strangest feeling that this man was important, that I'd known him. He was missing a tooth, covered in blood and obviously killed by a bullet to the head. He gave me a very peculiar feeling. And anyone who could feel sorrow would have been saddened by this man's condition. So, 
I started walking away. I had an instinctive feeling that there were people nearby, though where, I, I wasn't sure. But I needed to find people. They would help me. I was sure. What is a browser? A browser is your window to the internet. It's where you access your search engine, stream your favorite. I think this might be the end, for us, anyway, man, and all that we've accomplished. I've had plenty of time to think about it since the last time I saw the sun. The last time I okay, ever see it. I'm going to take over. Of... Cool, thanks. Y'all come. See ya, boss. See ya. Shit. Oh, well. Let's go to here. Hey boys. Hey boss. Hey guys. Yeah, buddy. Let's go chill here. Push pride. The world's but it is for us. I guess it started almost a month ago. A bunch of die. It could be longer. There's only the clocks scattered around the house to tell me how long, and half of those are dead by now. Anyway, I'm, I'm straying from the- Man, I remember. It seems to like yesterday the zombie apocalypse started. But it's, it's been a fucking while since the apocalypse started. Like shit. Put well, it again. It was on the news. A cruise ship sank for- no reason. It wasn't damaged. Just pulled straight down. Then the rest of the stories flooded in. Everything in the water was sinking. Oil rigs disappeared. People on the beach pulled down into the abyss. Nobody seemed to be able to explain why this was happening. Nothing floated anymore. It, it was bizarre. This filled the news for a couple of days until it just, it just got frightening. It was during one broadcast that it changed for the worse. It was a report from some beach on an on-location report about this strange phenomenon. They were just recycling the same questions we had all been asking for days. Suddenly, panic seemed to grip the face of the reporter. She screamed as the camera quickly tilted down. Her feet were sunk into the sand down to her shin. I remember smirking, thinking it was just some overly sensitive reporter messing up. But then the camera dropped. The remaining ten or so seconds that followed showed not just the reporter sinking into the sand, but all of them. The whole media circus that had descended on the beach to cover the same story. The reporter who was down to her shin a minute ago was now down to her chest. The shot of writhing, screaming, sinking people ended shortly as the camera was engulfed by the sand. The news stayed on a few more days, but there was nothing to say. Some blamed sinkholes for what had happened on the beach, while others argued against them from the safety of their downtown studio. The news was a waste of time now. It was much easier to look out the window. It was more or less a ghost town outside. Everyone was inside, afraid to leave their homes. It didn't seem to make sense. The roads and pavements were being absorbed by grass and dirt. Street signs and traffic lights were being consumed by the plants, too. Entire houses were being consumed. Some people tried to run, jumped from rooftop to rooftop, looking for higher ground. Occasionally, while flicking through what was left of the TV broadcasts, skyscrapers had become refugee camps. I had made one trip out of the house since this started, across the rooftops, an attempt to get supplies from a nearby supermarket, but that plan seemed to be a waste of time. It was a husk by the time I got there. Let's go on the uh, fucking supply run. Hey, uh, I'm gonna go on the supply run, okay? Oh, good boys, go ahead. Cool. Gang, gang. Let's go. Let's go on the fucking supply run. Yeah, buddy. Let's 
go. Go and fuck this why one dude. Why the fuck not yo? Why the fuck not? See if there is any surprise or survivors out here. Let's go check on this button here. Loot this fucking tree here. Definitely not. It's empty as fuck in here. So definitely not. There would be nothing in here. The same, pretty much, I think. Yeah, the same. Nothing much in here. Besides seats. And that's about all, yo. Oh fuck, I heard a zombie. I heard a fucking zombie bitch. Give him this shit. Need to go, need to go. I heard a fucking zombie. I fucking need to go now. Yeah, no, definitely not in here. It's too dark. There wouldn't be any surprise. Surprise in there anyway. What about in this building here? Please tell me there is surprise in this building. Please tell me there is surprise in this building. Smash it with my fucking, you know. up here. Some food, a baseball bat. Shit. Fuck you. Shit. Say any more, any more, any more. So, um, I'm not the only person here. Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. I'm not the only person here. How do I get up fucking stairs? Shit, shit, shit. I'm not, I'm not the only person here. Better fucking keep quiet. Fuck, shit. So much for being quiet, yo. Shit. Okay. So much for fucking being quiet. What's this do? Nothing. Much for being fucking quiet, but huh? Ah, what the fuck? This is a new one, a visible zombie. Jump this is a new one, yo. Another one into these. Fuck. Don't know where to fucking hit that con. Shit. Get up, get up, get up. I cannot die, I cannot die. I need to heal myself. There we are. Okay, good. What's this thing? Shit. Just go, just go, just go, just go, just go, just go. The way, just jump. Yo! Heal myself, heal myself quickly. I'm not, I'm not fucking going back in there, yo. A visible zombie? Fuck that. Heal myself again. Heal myself. Eat, eat, eat. Really? After 
save this guy. No. He's on his own. I'm sorry, bullet. No. He's on his own. I'm not fucking with invisible zombies. Fuck that. I, I kill normal zombies, but invisible zombies? What's the point? You don't know where they're coming from, you know. Shit like that, dude. But you don't know where they're coming from. But these zombies, I can kill these. Of course, but the invisible zombies? Nah. Fuck okay, enough, I'm immune to the zombie bite, I think. I hope anyway. Or in, in race, the zombie bite takes a long time for me to return. I hope that's not the case, but if that's the case, it is what it is, yo. Looks like someone already raided this area. Ooh. Let's go. What in fresh? No. Put that fucking back. What in fresh? No. Is there anything else? What's in here? Yeah, no. The rest is fucking raided. Shit. Welcome back, boss. Yeah, welcome back. Thanks. Put it in here basically. Not here, but. Well, hi there. Yo. Let's fucking put it. Well, here we are. Good, let's go to our PO. Press play, a blunt. Looted and pillaged. There was all the evidence I needed to see how bad this whole thing was. It's easy to be in denial about something like this, whatever this was, until it really seems to affect you. When I got back to my house, I, I noticed something. My car was gone. Well, almost. You could still see the top poking out from the overgrowth and loose soil. And not just my car. All of them. Bigger vehicles were still in sight, only partially obscured, but they were going down too. A few days later, my whole bottom floor was subterranean. I had managed to block the windows and door from bursting in from all the dirt and soil, but it was just a cell now. A mausoleum. Not somewhere I wanted to be. I spent most of my time by an upstairs window, staring at the hostile world outside. My neighbor died yesterday. He fell off his roof and was swallowed by the earth. He's not the first person to do that either. What made it notable was why he fell. He was trying to stop his dog from getting out. The dog's fine. Well, I assume so. It ran off. They're not affected, the animals. This is our fate. That nihilistic little discovery was way too much for me to bear. This whole thing. A living fucking nightmare. I hit the bottle hard and passed out for the night. When I woke up, my head pounded in the darkness. I flicked the light switch and the fuses, but the power was out. I took the flashlight by the fuse box and looked around the house for any supplies. While checking the upstairs, I saw it. The last glimpse of natural light I'll ever see. I had been thinking it was just night, that I'd slept all day in an alcoholic coma. By the time I could cross the room to the window, 
It was gone. I was underground. I tried to get out, smashing through plaster and tiles to be greeted with a stream of soil pouring out from where the sky should be. I don't know how much longer I've gotten here. In my house-sized coffin, there's only so much food and so much air. I've got a little bit of light, a couple candles, and a book of matches. The flashlight died some time ago. This is our fate. Man's fate. Our return to the Earth. Hour a month, you can get every story narration. Today was the day it slowed to 500 miles per hour, I think. Was that yesterday? Perhaps today it was planned to reach 400. I suppose it doesn't matter either way. It's hard to remember many things at this point. It was only a matter of time before science went too far and became humanity's downfall. But who would have guessed it would be the downfall of the existence of life anywhere? One year ago, it was announced over the news that a new method of harnessing dark energy had been discovered. I never understood all the details on what this meant, or how they were able to do it, but I do remember it being explained that dark energy was basically the building blocks of gravity. To be even more exact, it is basically what holds the universe together on a quantum level. Being able to control or manipulate this energy would mean that unlimited possibilities would be at humanity's disposal. And it was very exciting, but also very scary. Scary because America was currently on the brink of World War III and this new discovery was planned to be used for military purposes. A few months passed and the Soviet Union and British Empire had begun their strikes on each other. There was constant threats of nuclear weapons being used, and America was on the verge of becoming involved. NATO was very much against the experiments planned for controlling dark energy. Many researchers believed that tampering with such energy meant messing with the fabrics of space and time itself, and no matter what precautions were planned, could result in catastrophic and unimaginable effects on the Earth, or even affect the very laws of physics themselves. A facility had already been prepared in the middle of the Chihuahuan Desert in New Mexico for testing purposes. The matter wasn't debated long until there was evidence to suggest nuclear weapon strikes from the Soviet Union and China on the British Empire and possibly the United States. Testing was planned to start immediately. The incident occurred two months ago. America managed to stay out of the war for the time being. But the Soviets were still at war with China and most of Europe laid in ruin. No one knows how it happened, since nobody there lived to tell the tale. But at 12 o'clock noon on Tuesday, June 10th, an earthquake was felt across the world. A 7.8 level earthquake was recorded in every continent, country, state and city that lasted five minutes long. Breaking news reported that the facility in the New Mexico had been destroyed, but now existed where the facility oh, once boy. was. It took up the entire desert. It was almost as if reality had disappeared from the place. Shortly after, New Mexico soon had to be closed off from the rest of the country. Not even an hour after the incident occurred, people in cities surrounding the desert began to go mad, people claiming to hear voices, various deformities and diseases fell upon hundreds and people began killing each other in the streets. Anyone who would reach a 50 mile proximity to the sphere would begin to suffer from one of the many ailments that befell the poor citizens. Word of what science had brought upon humanity spread quickly and the war came to an end with the arrival of worse news. A few weeks after the incident, 
It was discovered by NASA astronomers that the rotation of the Earth had begun to slow down little by little, an estimated 11.2 seconds per day. But each day, it seemed to become a little more. It wasn't long before the rotation of the Earth went from 1,000 miles per hour to 800. And it wasn't just our planet. The moon and other planets in our solar system seem to be showing similar symptoms in their gravitational behaviours. It wasn't just the Earth's rotation slowing down. Time itself was slowing down. It was clear without any studies being done that whatever happened in the desert that day was the cause. In another month's time, the rotation of the planet had slowed to 400 miles per hour. The air itself began to become heavy, almost damp, and the fate of existence was slowly becoming accepted. I continued to live my remaining days at home with my wife and son. I don't know what was happening in the rest of the world, or with my friends or other family, but attempting to talk was like trying to read something far away while yawning. We had accepted our fate. Today was the day we knew it would all end. I approached my son and wife on the couch in our living room. The air felt like there were heavy curtains in front of me as I tried to reach my destination. I sat in between the two of them and gave each of them a slow turn and smile. I love yous were stretched out of our heavy mouths one last time before the shift was felt what the poor is that? Hey, the bad yo. Gang gang. So now that I ain't no fucking pockworks. <laughs> Man. Good night, boss. Yeah, good night, boss. Good night. Good night. Good night, guys. Good night, survivors. My praise. Here we are, my praise. There we are. Go upstairs. I will see you in the morning, I guess. See you then. Well, just another day, yo. Let's go kill someone for the night in Apocalypse. Why not? Hey, boss. Hey, boss. Good morning. Good morning. Yo, jump over here, jump over here. Let's go chill out here. Why the fuck not? And let's go put this over here. Too. Let's go chill up here, we do. Actually, no, let's go chill over. Go chill. Right over down here. At this place here, yo. Why the fuck not, yo? Let's go chill here. Fuck is this shit coming from? Oh, ha. Die. Shit. Die. Go back, go back, go back. I'm not fucking with that. I'm not fucking with that. Help, help, help. Help me, guys. Help. Fire, god damn it. Did 
There we go. Let's go to here we do. Let's go to over here actually. Stand up. Press play. A bun for day. Mom and James would want us to go. Please think of it that way. Why did this happen? She asked, the faint hint of disappointment in her voice. Well, it would be too hard to explain to you tonight, he said. But a long time ago, before my father, and before his father, and before his father's father, people learned how to build giant things out of the earth resources. They were wonderful things that helped us live the way we do today. But over time, these resources started to run out. 